Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an la محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حي على الصلاة especially the last and the final Prophet Muhammad <coughs> Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, upon his family and upon his followers. And may Allah SWT include us among his followers. <coughs> Allah SWT says in the Quran, يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُ إِلَّا أُلُوا الْأَلْبَابِ He gives wisdom whomsoever he wills and whosoever is given wisdom he is given a great good and none takes lessons except the people of reason Hikma is a very important word of the Qur'an it is mentioned many times in the Qur'an Qur'an is the book of Hikma Kitab al-Hakim and uh, 
The one who sent the Quran himself is Hakim. One of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Hakim. And the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he came to teach us the book, and that is the book of wisdom, but then also he came to teach us wisdom itself. Now, wisdom, sagacity, is, or hikmah, means that you understand, you learn, you realize where you are, what is your situation, what is your condition, and you know how to control yourself. <coughs> Restraining, hikmah also, that means the restraint. So you restrain yourself, you learn, and you move, maneuver yourself in the right way. Say the right words at the right time, do the right action in the right way, in the most appropriate way. That is the meaning of wisdom. Wisdom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the power in the world. Nobody has more power than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And nobody has more knowledge than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's alim. And he's aziz. And he's khabir. Aware of everything. But you will find in the Quran, with aziz comes hakim. Powerful, mighty, but wise. Alim, very knowledgeable, wise. Khabir, wise. Al Wasi' comprehends everything, hakim. Wasi' and hakima. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his prophets, his messengers, uh, that is, uh, Misaq al nabiyyin lama ataytukum min kitabi wa hikmah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his covenant with the prophets. I'm going giving you the book and also I'm giving you the wisdom. Wisdom is given to the prophets of Allah and wisdom is also given to the human beings. وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا الْقُمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ And Allah Subhanahu wa mentioned about Luqman, he was not a prophet, he was an ordinary human being, but Allah gave him a lot of wisdom, and that's why even his name is mentioned in the Quran. وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ He gave Luqman great wisdom, great understanding, to be thankful to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the final prophet and the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he came to teach the book and the wisdom. يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ He came to teach them the book and also teach them how to live with the book, how to use the book, how to understand the book and how to follow it. The sharia, the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the law of wisdom. Everything is in it is wisdom. You know, our great scholar Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah used to say that Mabnaha wa asasuha al hikma wal maslaha wal rahma wal adl. Four things he mentioned. Sharia is justice, Sharia is mercy, Sharia is Maslaha, human interest, and it is also hikmah, wisdom. And anything, any matter that is not, that does not fulfill this, it is not from Sharia. Even if somebody thinks it is of Sharia, if somebody interprets it as Sharia, it is not Sharia. This is a man like Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah. He said that. And Sharia is not, my brothers and sisters, Sharia is not just do's and don'ts. Sharia is not just halal and haram. Sharia is musalih. Sharia is maqasid. Sharia is the human interest. Sharia is objectives. <laughs> Sharia is awliyat, priorities. Sharia is muazanat, compare between the various things and see what is the most appropriate thing. Sharia is ma'alat. Sharia means that you understand the consequences 
of whatever you do. Awaqib, understand that. This is all Sharia is all about that. You understand what, where, what are you doing? And what is the most appropriate action? What is the priority? What should be done first and what should be done later? Even in the Masalih, Sharia talks about Masalih. Masalih means the benefits. <coughs> but it tells you what must Masalih have preference over the other Masalih. For example, it tells you that the Maslaha of the group has priority over the Maslaha of the Afrad, individuals. Masalih that are bigger have priority over the Masalih that are smaller. Masalih that are permanent have more preference over those that are temporary for short time. This is, this is a lot of wisdom. Fiqh al-Masalih, understanding of the wisdom of this. What are to do on that? And in a similar way, Sharia emphasizes very much that whatever you do, understand the consequences. And this is hikmah of Sharia. Understand the consequences of your actions. If you say a word, understand the consequence. <coughs> Mu'az came to the Prophet asking for his advice. Qal amsik alayka lisanak. Mu'az, control your tongue. He said, are we going to be questioned about whatever we say, Ya Rasulullah? Are we going to say what, what, something, words that come out from our mouth, are we going to be questioned about that? And the Prophet says, Pity on you. Sakilat ka um. Pity on you. Maaz, you don't understand that? What takes the people to hell except the what comes out from their mouth? The words that come out, come out from the mouth, sometimes they will take a person to the pitch of a hell that is going up 70 years deep. Keep on falling into the hell. That means everything has a consequence. Consequences have to be understood. These are the ma'alat. So we have to understand what is going to happen now and what is going to happen later, what is going to happen to us, what is going to happen to our family, what is going to happen to our community. What is going to happen to the people, humanity at large? And what is going to happen now and what is going to happen in the hereafter? All of these are malat. All of this is to be understood for taking any action. In our Sharia, we have something called Saddu Zaraya. Saddu Zaraya means closing the doors that will lead to the trouble. That is, closing the means by which problem will come. A beautiful example our ulama gives for Saddu Zara is what Allah SWT says in the Quran, وَلَا تَصُبُّ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَصُبُّ اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَرِ عَدْمٍ Do not cause, do not insult those they worship other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. To so, Mushrikeen, they were worshipping idols. So Allah says, don't abuse, don't insult their gods. Why? Because they will insult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For يَسُبُّ اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ عَلْمٍ Because then they will do that out of aggression, out of anger, they will abuse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is Saddu Zaraya. Closing the mean. It's understanding the consequence. Rasulullah sallallahu did not like munafiqeen. And he knew who were the munafiqeen in his community. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made, made, made him know that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed him. And he had the knowledge through wahi. And he knew them by name. He knew them by their face. And he wanted some time to get rid of them. But he did not do that. He said, I don't want to do that. Why? Because that will uh, harm the da'wah, the message. People may think that he is dividing his own people. So he said, I did not do that. That's Saddu Zaraya. That is closing the means of the understanding the consequences. Rasulullah wanted to change the building of Kaaba. 
Because Kaaba was, at the time of Ibrahim salam, was not the way it is now. If you go now today and you see that there is Hatim, which was part of the Kaaba. And he wanted to make it the way it was at the time of Ibrahim salam. But then he said to his wife Aisha, your people are new in Islam. They have, uh, it is, they are still learning. And if I do something that, they get confused. I don't want to have the confusion. This understanding, the consequences. Rasulullah sallam, messenger of Allah, truthful person, no doubt about that. But he made an agreement at Hudaybiyah with the Mushrikeen of Mecca. Even people like Umar anhu thought that it was a weak agreement. But he made that because he knew the consequences. He knew what is going to be. So this is my brother and sister, this is what is needed very much. Muslim Ummah today is living with kind of emotions. With uh, anybody can provoke them, anybody can make them angry, anybody can do this, this, that, and that. And then they do things without understanding any consequence. What is going to happen? What is going to happen to us, to our reputation, to our name, to our religion? to our communities, what is going to happen, all of this thing. So, most important thing is that people understand the wisdom. Sometimes people say that, Al-Adu Al-Aqil Ahsan Min As-Sadiq Al-Jahil That is a, 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 a wise uh, the, uh, enemy is better than a stupid friend. And we have a lot of stupid friends today, unfortunately, a lot of stupid friends. Because they think that they are serving Islam, but actually they are harming Islam. Actually they are harming themselves, they are harming the Ummah, and they are harming the humanity. Islam teaches us that you tackle with the problem in such a way that you make from the bad good. You make your enemies your friends. <coughs> we are making friends enemies. Make your enemies your friends. لا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة إذا فعلت هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم وما يلقاها إلا الذين صبوا وما يلقاها إلا ذو حز عظيم. Bad things and the good things are not equal. So remove the bad things with the things that are good. And then you will see those who are your enemies will become your friends. And they will become your warm friends. They are very warm friends. That means you have to have learned the art of making the enemies friends. This is an art. This is a very uh, something that one has to learn. One has to master it. And the master of that was Rasulullah <laughs> People used to come to him and they're saying, I hated him, I hated his religion. But the, they met him and then they leave, they said, there is no one whom I love more than him. Shame them. By his behavior, by his talk, by the way he used to treat people, the way he used to look at them. This is the style, this is the way. And how you can learn that? You can learn that through patience. So this requires a lot of patience. And patience is part of hikmah. Hikmah, that is. And the Quran emphasizes very much patience. People who are patient in the situation of poverty, in the situation of sickness, in the situation of conflicts, in the situation of anger, as-sabru in the ghadab, as-sabru in the aza, as-sabru in the bala, as-sabru in the shahwat, as-sabru ala ta'ad. All of this is, you will find that in the Quran. Emphasize sabru. And the short surah that we all know, alhamdulillah, 
Surah Al-Asr emphasized that point. Inna l-insana la fi khusr. Wal asr, inna l-insana la fi khusr. Illa al-ladhina amunu wa amunu al-salihat wa tawasaw bil-haqq wa tawasaw bil-sabr. And by the token of time, Allah SWT bring the whole time, the whole history to our testimony. Let's read the history. People are losers. Except those who believe and do good deeds, and then they remind each other to be patient. They remind each other to be for truth and to be patient. Yes, truth is there, but at the same time, with the truth has to be patience, perseverance. That is, uh, don't uh, act, but don't react. Don't be provoked by those who want to provoke you. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Abdullah ibn Abbas, he was his cousin, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abbas is uncle, and he says, he's a young uncle, and uh, also this, uh, this uh, Abdullah lived, used to be associated with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam come to him again and again, seeking knowledge from Rasulullah Sallallahu <coughs> So much so that the Prophet Sallallahu said, Allah ma'allimun hikmah. Allah teach him wisdom. Allah teach him wisdom. And it was bahar. It was ocean of knowledge. Abdullah ibn Abbas, most knowledgeable person. He had a great uh, sahaba, great sahaba Abu Bakr and Umar, may Allah be pleased with them. They used to consult with him. And the Prophet ﷺ gave him the, the wisdom, he said, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ فِي الصَّبْرِ عَلَى الْمَكَارِهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Remember that if you be patient on the situation that you do not like, you will find a lot of good. وَأَنَّ النَّصْرَ مَعَ الصَّبْرِ وَأَنَّ النَّصْرَ مَعَ الصَّبْرِ And the victory comes through patience. So may Allah SWT give us the wisdom, the understanding of the situation and see what is the situation now and what is to be expected. As the ulama say, al-waqi' wal mutawaqi' That is what is now and what is going to happen. So I pray for Allah SWT to guide us and keep us on the right path. Please move forward so that others who are coming join. الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه I'm very pleased to be here among you may Allah SWT bless you bless this community bless your leaders Imam Yasser Rami all the other board members may Allah bless the whole community for all the good work that you are doing and all alhamdulillah all our Islamic centers in Southern California you know, we have more than 120 mosques now, alhamdulillah, in Southern California. And uh, new mosques are coming, and alhamdulillah, still the community is growing. And everywhere you go, you'll find there is a parking problem, because more people, mashallah, are coming to the masajid. This is a beautiful uh, thing, alhamdulillah. May Allah SWT bless the community and keep our community together. The, the success comes also through, through working together. And we have uh, a Shura Council of Southern California, Alhamdulillah, that brings the people together. It is an organization to bring the Muslim communities, all the Islamic centers together so they can work together, cooperate with each other, understand, because when we are together, inshallah, there will be success and there will be happiness and there will be the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa jama'ah. Allah's hand is with the jama'ah, with the people. Alhamdulillah, 20 years have passed to this organization, Shura Council of Southern California, and we are going to celebrate that. Celebrate, alhamdulillah, the work that this organization has done. So I want you to keep in your mind, put it on your calendar, and understand that, that you all should come and participate in the conference that will be, inshallah, on Saturday. March 21. When you leave, take this card with you 
and inshallah this will be a reminder for you oh, that um, this is honoring the past, treasuring the present and shaping the future. So we have to understand what we have done in the past, what is going on now and where we are going to move. Al-waqa' wal mutawaqa' That is present and what is expected inshallah. Uh, what is the ideal and what is the possible? What is the real? So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keep us on the right path. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusallun ala al-nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amunu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslim. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen. Khususan ala al-khulafai al-arba'ah. Abi Bakrin wa Umar wa Usman wa Ali. Wa ala al-sayyidain al-shahidain. Abi Muhammad al-Hassan wa bi Abdillah al-Hussain. وعلى أمهما فاطمة الزهراء وعلى عمه المعزمين المكرمين عند الله والناس الحمزة والعباس وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم بفضلك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين ويا أرحم الراحمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم إنا نسلك العفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار اللهم إنا نسلك إيمانا كاملا ويقينا صادقا ولسانا ذاكرا وقلبا خاشعا اللهم إنا نسلك التوبة قبل الموت والراحة عند الموت والعفو عند الحساب والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار عباد الله رحمك الله إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر فأقيم الصلاة